Brian Johnson is taking over 100 supplements per day, or at least that's what he used to do. He now created his own supplement line that distills all those 100 supplements into just a handful of pills and some powders. Brian says that all of those supplements have a clinically relevant dose. And they're selected for certain frontline interventions such as weight loss, anti-aging, muscle, sleep, antioxidant defense, etc. In this video, I'm going to review all of the ingredients in the Blueprint Supplement Stack. I'll go through all the research of each ingredient to see if they're really evidence-based and if the dosages are really clinically relevant. This is going to be a pretty long video, so I'm putting all the timestamps of the ingredients into the description box below so you can check out whatever specific ingredient that you're interested in. First off, I do like the idea that Brian is listing out all the ingredients in his supplements and the exact dosages. A lot of companies might use proprietary blends, which means they're using their own patent and dosage formula, which is why you don't know exactly how much of each ingredient there is. Let's start with the longevity mix. It's this pink powder drink. The ingredients are vitamin C as ascorbic acid 250 milligrams, magnesium as magnesium citrate 150 milligrams, creatine monohydrate 2500 milligrams, calcium alpha ketoglutarate 2 grams, glucosamine sulfate 1500 milligrams, taurine 1500 milligrams, glycine 1200 milligrams, lysine 1200 milligrams, ashwagandha 600 milligrams, reduced glutathione 250 milligrams, theanine 200 milligrams, and sodium hyaluronate. 120 milligrams. I want to start with calcium alpha ketoglutarate or AKG because this is the star of this blend. Blueprint says calcium AKG is for anti-aging, metabolism, energy, muscle, and cognition. Now this is quite interesting and there are most studies showing that calcium AKG extends lifespan by up to 20% and health span by 40%. And the 2021 clinical trial on humans saw that taking a thousand milligrams of calcium AKG for seven months reduced the DNA methylation age of 42 individuals by eight years. Now, now, this sounds quite amazing to reduce your biological age in such a short time, but there's almost no practical takeaway to reducing your DNA methylation age, and we don't necessarily know like what it actually means in the final outcomes of health. What's more, the study was done by a company on their patented formula called Rejuvent, so you have to take it with a grain of salt. There's currently another clinical trial called ABLE that seeks to replicate these findings. They're using 1,000 milligrams of calcium AKG for six months on 120 people between the ages of 40 and 60 and they'll also measure functional outcomes like grip strength aerobic capacity arterial stiffness inflammation etc for me the secondary outcomes such as grip strength vo max etc are much more important and much more interesting we have a lot more data about the consequences of having high vo max and some of the other effects but we don't have that data with these biological age tests akg is involved in the metabolism specifically the krebs cycle that generates energy akg levels decline with age by about tenfold after the age of 40 which makes it plausible that supplementation could have health benefits. There are indeed several human clinical trials over the past few decades that have shown that AKG helps with wound healing, immunity, and faster recovery from surgeries. A 2022 review on AKG stated that a few studies published in the 1980s and 1990s in humans suggested the potential benefits of AKG in muscle growth, wound healing, and promoting faster recovery after surgery. So far, there are no recently published studies demonstrating the role of AKG in treating aging and age-related diseases. Diseases. Hence, further clinical studies are required to better understand the role of AKG in humans. AKG is otherwise safe, but it is quite expensive. It's one of the most expensive ingredients in the longevity mix and potentially the entire blueprint stack. The problem is that it has one of the lowest amount of clinical trials when it comes to longevity. So you're spending the most money, but you have the least certainty about its benefits. But this doesn't mean that I'm not excited about future trials on AKG, so we just have to wait for them. Vitamin C is the the next ingredient in the longevity mix, the Blueprint website says it's selected for antioxidant, immune, skin, hair, anti-aging, and heart benefits. Usually, vitamin C is used to prevent or treat the flu. A 2013 Cochrane review of 29 placebo-controlled trials found that vitamin C at a dose of 200 milligrams or above had no effect on the incidence of common colds. However, regular supplementation was shown to reduce the duration of cold symptoms. Five studies also found that vitamin C reduced the risk of common cold by 50% in people engaged in a lot of physical stress like marathon running. Overall, the review concluded that vitamin C isn't justified for preventing the cold, but it might be useful for people who are experiencing higher amounts of physical stress. Regarding skin, hair, and nails, then yes, vitamin C is essential for initiating collagen synthesis. However, the studies on this are done with topical vitamin C, not the oral form. There is one study that found that oral supplementation of vitamin C and vitamin E in 18 people increased the dose of UVB radiation 
radiation from the sun needed to cause redness of the skin. The subjects also saw less skin lesions after getting sunburned when taking vitamin C and E. A 2007 epidemiological study found that people who ate more dietary vitamin C from fruits and vegetables had a lower likelihood of a wrinkled appearance and senile dryness. But that refers to dietary vitamin C and these studies are observational which means that the effects might have been caused by some other healthy lifestyle factors. And it certainly doesn't mean that supplementing vitamin C would have those benefits. What about chronic diseases like heart disease? A 2007 randomized controlled trial on over 8,000 women over the age of 40 with history of cardiovascular disease and with three or more risk factors found that there were no overall effects of vitamin C, E or beta carotene on cardiovascular events among women at high risk of cardiovascular disease. Another 2004 randomized controlled trial took over 13,000 middle-aged people and told them to take antioxidants including ascorbic acid for 7.5 years. They found that the antioxidants didn't reduce the risk of total cancer incidence ischemic heart disease or all-cause mortality in women, but men did see a reduction in the incidence of total cancer and all-cause mortality. This could be because men have a baseline lower antioxidant status and a lower intake of foods that contain antioxidants, such as fruit and vegetables. And the 2017 Cochrane Review of Clinical Trials concluded that vitamin C supplementation doesn't reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. So, supplementing with vitamin C or vitamin E doesn't provide any additional benefits that you wouldn't get from your diet. If you're eating fruits and vegetables, Vegetables, then you're getting all the vitamin C that your body needs. Next, let's look at creatine monohydrate, which is said to work for the brain, muscles, heart, energy, and anti-aging. Indeed, creatine is probably the most evidence-based supplement there is, and it has hundreds, if not thousands, of studies showing that it increases muscle strength, muscle mass, and sports performance. However, many people are still not aware that creatine has longevity benefits for the brain as well. It's been shown to improve cognition, better memory, reduce sleep demand, and improve glucose tolerance. When it comes to heart health, then here's what a 2021 review on the subject concluded. In otherwise healthy people with healthy hearts, creatine doesn't improve cardiac function. In people with heart failure, creatine improves muscle function, which could be beneficial to counteract fatigue and weakness. Overall, creatine is safe except in people with kidney failure. So creatine is the best supplement for physical performance, and it also appears to have cognitive benefits. But the evidence for it having heart benefits is somewhat limited for people who have already healthy hearts. Regardless, a dose of 2.5 to 3 grams of creatine monohydrate is the gold standard. It's the cheapest form of creatine and it is a good dose. Next up we have magnesium citrate for bone, muscle, mood, stress, heart and energy. Magnesium is indeed one of those minerals that a lot of people aren't getting enough of and magnesium deficiency does increase the risk of many chronic inflammatory conditions. Magnesium deficiency is also at the center of all the hallmarks of aging. What about the clinical trials? A 2023 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials concluded that magnesium supplements can improve depression score in people with depressive disorders. However, they typically use 250 milligrams, whereas Blueprint has 150 milligrams. Another 2021 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that magnesium supplements can reduce inflammatory markers such as CRP. A 2016 meta-analysis of double-blind placebo-controlled trials found that magnesium supplements can lower blood pressure, but the median dose was 368 milligrams a day, ranging from 240 to 960 milligrams per day. Regarding bone health, then a 2021 system review found that low magnesium intake is linked to a higher risk of bone fractures and low bone mineral density. Most interventions that have shown benefits in terms of increasing bone density have used either magnesium citrate, carbonate or oxide with a dose between 250 to 1800 milligrams per day. That's also a much higher dose than what's in blueprint. In my opinion and based on the studies, a dose of 150 milligrams of magnesium citrate isn't the optimal dose and it is somewhat underdosed. Most people would benefit from at least 250 milligrams of magnesium and possibly up to 400 or even beyond. And magnesium citrate is also considered to be somewhat of a lower quality magnesium because of its lower bioavailability and because of the risk of diarrhea. There's a reason it's called magnesium citrate. The better types would be something like magnesium taurate, orotate, bisglycinate or threonate. Glucosamine is needed for cartilage synthesis and it improves joint function. There's a bit of a controversy about whether or not glucosamine actually improves joint function or osteoarthritis. For example, a 2000 review of clinical trials concluded that glucosamine does improve osteoarthritis symptoms to a moderate to large degree, but the results might be due to bias. The standard dose is indeed 1.5 grams per day of glucosamine sulfate, which is what Blueprint uses. However, there is reasons to think that larger doses of up to 3 grams are needed and that 1.5 grams isn't the optimal dose for maximum benefits. Besides joint function, there's also observational studies finding that glucosamine supplementation is linked to up to a 39% low 
lower risk of mortality and cardiovascular disease. The reason for that is thought to be because glucosamine has anti-inflammatory effects. These are observational studies and they could be confounded by the healthy user bias that people taking glucosamine are just health conscious. But glucosamine is generally safe and quite cheap, so there's little to no downside. But overall evidence suggests that glucosamine works only for people who have some aspects of osteoarthritis. Taurine is next and this supplement has become quite popular recently. I made a complete video about taurine a few weeks ago and the conclusion was that the clinical trials on taurine supplementation do find that a dose of 0.5 to 6 grams per day can improve things like metabolic syndrome, blood pressure and even exercise performance. But these people usually have already existing poor metabolic health and the elite athletes don't see a significant benefit from taurine. So for otherwise healthy people, taurine might have some modest benefits, but it's not a large effect. I do recall that Brian added taurine to his supplement stack after a mouse study last year showing how taurine extended the lifespan of mice. The human equivalent dose they used was 6 grams, with 3 grams also providing minor benefits. But Blueprint uses a dose of 1.5 grams, which is yes, somewhere in the middle of the clinical trials, but it's not as high as the mouse life extension study. Next up is my favorite supplement, glycine. I've even written an entire book about it called The Collagen Cure. There is interesting animal studies showing how glycine supplementation does extend lifespan of mice by 4-6%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's still significant. In human clinical trials on diabetics, supplementing 5 grams of glycine 3-4 to four times a day improves hemoglobin A1c levels and lowers inflammation. For sleep, a 3-gram dose has also been seen to improve sleep quality and duration. These dosages are much larger than the 1.2 grams in the longevity mix. When we're talking about glycine, then it's worth well, to mention how the combination of glycine and NAC called Glynac has quite a lot of evidence for health benefits and anti-aging effects. There are several clinical trials on elderly people done over the last few years that have shown how glycine and NAC supplementation improves functional outcomes related to aging such as grip strength, walking speed, inflammation, body composition and other hallmarks of aging. That's why I'm confident in saying that glycine and NAC is really one of the most evidence-based longevity supplements pretty much after creatine or omega-3s. However, these studies use a relatively large dose of glycine and NEC. In fact, they have to use a dose of up to 4 to 8 grams of glycine and NEC both to see an effect and a dose of 2.5 grams doesn't appear to have any significant effect in raising glutathione levels. Blueprint has a glycine dose of 1.2 grams in the longevity mix and their NEC dose in the other pills is also 1.2 grams. Based on the clinical trials on Glynac supplementation in the elderly people, that would be an underdose. But Brian isn't 70 years old, he's in his 40s so he might not need that large of a dose. But if you were to be in your 70s or 80s, which those other clinical trials are done on, then you would need a much larger dose, up to 4 to 8 grams of glycine and NAC alone. Glycine is also needed for collagen turnover and the minimal requirement for collagen turnover is 12 grams of glycine per day. Your body makes 3 grams but those 3 grams are needed for glutathione synthesis. Because Brian is vegan, he's not getting that much glycine from his diet and the 1.2 grams that he gets from the supplement isn't enough for optimal collagen turnover. The longevity mix also contains 250 milligrams of reduced glutathione. A 2017 clinical trial found that 250 milligrams of glutathione in both its reduced and oxidized form had skin lightening effects and it reduced some skin wrinkles. Another 2022 clinical trial on 500 milligrams of oral glutathione found that 500 milligrams of oral glutathione improved hemoglobin A1c and fasting insulin in elderly people with diabetes. Glutathione supplementation does reduce inflammation and oxidative stress by raising glutathione levels, but eliminating all oxidative stress and inflammation is actually not a good idea. You need some inflammation to actually have health benefits from things like exercise. For example, antioxidant supplementation has been seen to reduce muscle growth and is even associated with higher risk of mortality. So yes, glutathione does reduce inflammation, but how much inflammation do you really need to reduce? If you're eating an already healthy diet, you're already following other healthy lifestyle practices, then generally you don't really need to boost your antioxidant defense or take a lot of antioxidants and supplements and it actually might have some negative side effects. Lysine is an interesting choice for this supplement because it's not a very common nutrient deficiency. A 2017 study found that lysine supplementation helped to normalize blood pressure in people with suboptimal lysine intake. Another 2020 clinical trial found that lysine improved glucose control and lowered cholesterol in people with prediabetes. But this was done on a patented formula called Lysolin by another company. A 2011 review of lysine supplementation concluded that cell studies show it might have benefits on bone health and other chronic 
like diseases like Alzheimer's or heart disease, but there are no clinical trials to prove it. So it looks like lysine has benefits only if you're on a low lysine diet. Because lysine is an amino acid that you get from protein mostly, then it might be that Brian is just not getting enough lysine from his diet and he needs to supplement it. There's also some evidence that lysine supplementation reduces the risk of herpes virus infections, but the doses for that should be over 1.2 grams. But Blueprint's dosage is exactly 1.2 grams. So if Brian is taking lysine for herpes virus, then he is underdosing. He might also be trying to prevent getting herpes. But a 2015 Cochrane review of clinical trials found that lysine had no preventive effects against herpes or cold sores. KSM 66 ashwagandha, according to Blueprint, is for mood, stress, inflammation, sleep, hormones, and immunity. A 2021 meta-analysis of clinical trials found that ashwagandha can alleviate anxiety and stress. However, the treatment dose and the type of ashwagandha used varied greatly between the studies. The doses ranged from 240 to 1250 milligrams a day, which is quite a wide range. Another 2021 meta-analysis of five randomized controlled trials found that ashwagandha improved sleep in adults, but the effects were larger in people with insomnia. The dosage used was over 600 milligrams per day. There are also many clinical trials showing that ashwagandha improves testosterone and subjective sexual well-being in men. A 2021 review of clinical trials found that KSM 66 ashwagandha at a dose of 600 milligrams a day does improve testosterone by 15% in young men if used for 8 weeks. A dose of 657 milligrams a day in infertile men was seen to increase testosterone by 17% after 90 days. And women without hormonal disturbances have also been seen to experience an improvement in their sexual health by taking 300 milligrams of ashwagandha twice a day for 8 weeks. So yes, ashwagandha does appear to have evidence for hormonal health, sleep and stress. And the longevity mix used as the right dose. Theanine is a classic in nootropic snacks as it has an anxiolytic and calming effect that helps with cognition. A 2021 randomized controlled trial did find that L-theanine at a dose of 100 mg improved attention and executive functioning in middle-aged and older adults. Another 2022 clinical trial found that 200 mg of theanine supported mental health in people with stress-related ailments or cognitive impairment. And a 2023 systematic review discovered that theanine at a dose of 50 to 655 mg a day showed promise in improving sleep quality, but a dose of over 655 mg had negative effects on sleep. So, theanine has evidence for sleep and stress, possibly even cognition, and the longevity mix has the right dose of 200 milligrams. The last supplement in the longevity mix is sodium hyaluronate. This is interesting, and the biggest reason I think it's in the mix is because it might help with dry eyes. And I do recall Brian saying that he has dry eyes. However, a 2017 systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that sodium hyaluronate based in artificial tears were not consistently more effective than other tears in treating dry eye syndrome. This doesn't mean that Brian isn't getting benefits from using this, it just means that it's not more effective than something else. The Blueprint website also says that sodium hyaluronate has benefits on skin anti-aging. There is some interesting studies on hyaluronic acid at a dose of 200 mg improving skin wrinkles. However, the evidence for oral sodium hyaluronate supplements is limited. The studies are generally done with topical sodium hyaluronate creams. Alright, so we've gone through all of the ingredients in the longevity mix. What would be my rating out of a scale of 1 to 5? My rating is gonna be a solid 4 out of 5. Some of the ingredients are properly dosed and evidence-based like ashwagandha, theanine and creatine, but some are underdosed like magnesium and glycine. And others have more limited evidence such as calcium, AKG, lysine and vitamin C, at least for otherwise healthy people who don't have any deficiencies. Next, let's look at the blueprint pills. There are four bottles of supplements, essential soft gel, essential capsules, NAC plus ginger plus curcumin and red yeast rice plus garlic. Let's start with the essential soft gels. The ingredients are vitamin K1, 1500 micrograms, lutein 15 milligrams, lycopene 15 milligrams, astaxanthin 12 milligrams, vitamin K2 MK4 5 milligrams, zeaxanthin 3 milligrams, and vitamin K2 MK7 600 micrograms. So this is like a fat soluble carotenoid supplement that's good for the skin, brain, and eyes. Blueprint says vitamin K1 is for bones, heart, cell maintenance, and inflammation. It's supposed to prevent uncontrolled bleeding and unwanted calcification. It's often thought that vitamin K1 is for the bones and K2 is for the arteries to prevent calcification. But I actually found a recent 2022 randomized controlled trial on people with diabetes where 10 milligrams of vitamin K1 per day was found to decrease the likelihood of developing new lesions in the coronary arteries, aorta, and both aortic and coronary arteries. 
However, the study used a dose of 10 milligrams, whereas Blueprint has a dose of 1.5 milligrams, which is almost 10 times smaller. Another 2022 clinical trial on hemodialysis patients found that people taking 5 milligrams of vitamin K1 for 18 months had a 68% lower progression of thoracic aortic calcification. So this dose isn't going to work for the calcification part. Regarding inflammation, then this 2018 double-blind placebo-controlled trial found that 10 milligrams of vitamin K1 for 8 weeks in patients of rheumatoid arthritis didn't lower inflammation or disease severity. That's interesting because you would expect that people with high inflammation that they would see a decrease in inflammation levels, but they didn't, even though they had arthritis and even though they used a large dose of 10 milligrams a day. And that 10 milligrams is almost 10 times larger than the one in Blueprint. Dietary vitamin K1 intake is linked to a lower risk of all-cause mortality, heart disease, hip fractures, and diabetes. A 2019 review concluded that K1 supplementation does reduce the risk of fractures, but the studies are considered low quality. So getting vitamin K1 from your diet does appear to have benefits and it is associated with better health outcomes. But the same can't be said about supplemental K1. You get vitamin K1 from leafy greens like spinach, kale, mustard greens, Swiss chard, etc. as well as natto, broccoli and in smaller amounts from liver and cheeses. It's interesting why Brian is taking K1 because he's already eating so much vitamin K1 from his diet. Next let's look at vitamin K2. They have two types of vitamin K2, MK4 and MK7 both in MCT oil which are like. There are over 15 different types of vitamin K2, which are called menaquinones, and MK4 and MK7 are the most common types. The problem with MK4 is that it has a short half-life. MK7 has up to 48 times longer half-life than MK4. MK4 also requires a very large dose, whereas MK7 is effective already with a dose of 100 micrograms. Regarding the benefits, then there is evidence that vitamin K2 MK7 can slow down and even reduce coronary artery calcification. A 2023 meta-analysis of 14 randomized controlled trials concluded that vitamin K supplementation could slow down coronary artery calcification. The studies used about 100 to 2000 micrograms of vitamin K2 MK7. Blueprint uses a dose of 600 micrograms of MK7 which is a higher dose and it's a good one. Regarding bone density, a 2015 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that MK4 supplementation at a dose of 1.5 milligrams a day improved bone mineral density in postmenopausal women with osteoporosis, but it didn't improve it in postmenopausal women without osteoporosis. Blueprint has a dose of 5 milligrams for MK4 which is more than needed, but there's no evidence that supplemental MK4 is going to prevent you from getting fractures or increase your bone density unless you have osteoporosis. Next up we have astaxanthin which is a carotenoid you get from salmon. Astaxanthin has also been seen to have anti-inflammatory, cardioprotective and neuroprotective qualities in randomized clinical trials. A 2022 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that astaxanthin supplementation did reduce inflammation and oxidative stress mildly. Another 2022 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that astaxanthin improves markers of metabolic syndrome such as cholesterol, triglycerides, and blood pressure. That's quite a large amount of clinical trials indicating that astaxanthin does appear to have benefits, especially for inflammation and metabolic health. But astaxanthin also appears to have benefits on skin health. Astaxanthin is a potent antioxidant that can protect the skin from UV radiation. A 2021 systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that oral astaxanthin supplementation at a dose of 2 to 12 milligrams a day was able to improve skin moisturization and elasticity. Another 2021 review of clinical trials saw a dose of 3 to 6 milligrams a day of astaxanthin having benefits for photo-aged skin. Blueprint uses 12 milligrams of astaxanthin, which is a large and effective dose. The essential soft gels also contain other other carotenoids such as lycopene, lutein, and zeaxanthin. There is evidence that higher levels of carotenoids in the brain and blood are linked to better cognitive function, better memory, and learning, as well as a reduced incidence of dementia. Higher dietary carotenoid intake is also correlated with better cognitive function. You get these carotenoids from salmon, carrots, sweet potatoes, pumpkin, egg yolks, and different colorful vegetables and fruits. Regarding supplementation, then a 2023 systematic review found that beta-carotene supplementation at a dose ranging from 6 to 50 milligrams a day combined with a multi-complex such as vitamin E, vitamin C, zinc or selenium was associated with maintenance of cognitive function over the course of up to 20 years. Supplementing with lutein and zeaxanthin has been seen to improve visual memory and learning and cognitive function in people with self-reported cognitive complaints. The dose used was 10 milligrams of lutein and 2 milligrams of zeaxanthin. Blueprint has 15 milligrams of lutein and 3 milligrams of zeaxanthin which exceeds the mark. Lycopene is what you get from tomatoes and it has been seen 
seen to influence some hallmarks of cancer in human studies. A 2020 review of studies found that in human trials, lycopene supplementation at a dose of 15 mg a day improved immune function in elderly people, which is the same dose used in Blueprint. But most of these studies are done on dietary lycopene intake, not supplemental. Overall, my rating for the essential soft gels is 4.9 out of 5. I think it's the best product in the Blueprint stack and it's something that you know I would consider taking myself. Mostly because I find it a very good insurance policy for getting your carotenoids and keeping your eyes healthy for the long term. And as xanthin and K2 also have other benefits beyond that. Moving on with the essential capsules, which is like a multivitamin. I'm not going to go through all the vitamins and minerals in this supplement because it will be too long. And to be honest, I'm not a big fan of multivitamins because there could be many contraindications between all these ingredients that we don't know about. It's also hard to look at the health effects of multivitamins because different multivitamins use different amounts of vitamins and minerals. So there's no specific gold standard dose for multivitamins. I'll say this, that there are several randomized controlled trials that have shown how multivitamin and mineral supplementation is linked to better cognitive performance and memory in elderly people. What about the other ingredients in essential capsules? Nicotinamide riboside is an NAD booster that raises NAD levels. Human clinical trials find that NR is safe and it raises NAD in a dose-dependent manner, starting from 100 mg with no reported side effects. NR is relatively new and we don't have that many clinical trials on it. Here are some of the things we do know related to longevity. NR hasn't been seen to improve insulin sensitivity even at a dose of 2000 mg a day in obese subjects subjects who are prime targets for getting those benefits. A 2023 randomized clinical trial on Alzheimer's disease patients found that a cocktail of supplements that included 1000 mg of NR improved cognitive function and increased hippocampal volume and cortical thickness. However, there were several other ingredients in the cocktail besides NR. Another 2023 trial on NR supplementation at a dose of 1500 mg twice a day in 10 Parkinson's patients resulted in improvements in cognition scores. Overall, NR has very limited evidence that it has benefits. And even the blueprint dosage is much smaller than the one used in clinical trials. Spermidine is another popular supplement, but as of now, there's almost no evidence that it works. A 2023 randomized placebo-controlled study on healthy adults found that 15 mg of spermidine a day as a supplement for 5 days didn't increase blood or salivary spermidine levels. A 2022 randomized controlled trial found that long-term spermidine supplementation in people with subjective cognitive decline didn't modify memory and biomarkers compared to placebo. So, in my opinion, there's no evidence that you would want to take spermidine as a supplement. The hype about spermidine having longevity benefits Benefits comes from observational studies that find how spermidine intake from foods is linked to lower mortality, blood pressure, and heart disease. But that applies to dietary spermidine intake, not the supplements. The lowest risk is seen with an intake of 11.6 mg a day from dietary spermidine. And Blueprint has a dose of 10 mg, so I think they're trying, trying to target that amount. But, based on evidence, is not going to even raise your spermidine levels. Lithium is an interesting and thought-provoking ingredient. Historically, lithium has been used to treat bipolar disorder. However, there's an interesting link between lithium and brain aging, as well as mental health. A 2015 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that lithium treatment could reduce cognitive decline and be beneficial in people with mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's dementia. There are also observational studies linking lithium intake to lower rates of dementia and cognitive impairment in elderly people. Overall, lithium has mood stabilizing benefits and it also might have some neuroprotective effects. But the evidence currently suggests that it works mostly for people who have dementia or mild cognitive impairment. Rhodiola rosea is an adaptogen that has been seen to have benefits on stress in clinical trials. However, the dosages in those studies are usually around 340 to 600 milligrams a day, whereas Blueprint has a dose of 300 milligrams. CoQ10 is considered a mitochondrial supplement that supports energy and heart function. A 2022 meta analysis of randomized controlled trials concluded that there's evidence that CoQ10 could reduce fatigue. Another 2022 meta-analysis of clinical trials found that CoQ10 at a dose of 100 to 200 mg could improve glycemic control, especially in diabetes. A 2024 meta-analysis on sports performance found that CoQ10 reduces muscle damage and oxidative stress, but with a dose-dependent manner over 100 mg a day. However, Blueprint uses a dose of 50 mg, which appears to be underdosed. Overall, I'm going to give the essential capsules a rating of 2.5 out of 5. I think it's the worst supplement in the stack. Yes, there are some interesting ingredients, there and you could cover your daily vitamins and minerals with it quite easily but the other ingredients appear to be almost like extra fluff with uh, not much evidence. Next let's cover NAC plus ginger plus curcumin. 
It's got 1200 milligrams of NAC, 400 milligrams of ginger, and 250 milligrams of curcumin. I already talked about NAC in the longevity mix. Basically, a dose of 1200 milligrams might not be enough for the elderly people, but it might work for someone like Brian, who's in his 40s. A 2020 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials concluded that NAC significantly decreased some markers of oxidative stress like homocysteine and MDA, but it had no effect on some other inflammatory markers like CRP or TNF-alpha. The mean dosage in these studies was 500 to 2000 milligrams, and the participants were 30 to 70 years old. A 2023 meta-analysis of clinical trials also found that NAC can improve metabolic markers such as blood glucose and lipids in women with PCOS. So overall, NAC works and Blueprint has the right dose. Curcumin is a polyphenol found in turmeric with antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. Three meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials from 2021 and 2023 saw that oral curcumin supplementation reduces markers of inflammation such as CRP, IL-6, TNF-alpha, and IL-8. The dosages used in these trials were between 300 to 1900 milligrams a day. So there is quite a lot of evidence that curcumin might have benefits for lowering inflammation. However, a lot of these studies also use piperin to improve curcumin's absorption because curcumin alone is with very bad bioavailability. Blueprint doesn't contain any piperin or even fat that could improve absorption, which is a negative. Ginger is another herb with anti-inflammatory benefits. A 2022 review found that human studies show how ginger does improve inflammation. A 2024 meta-analysis of 27 randomized controlled trials showed a significant link between ginger supplementation of 2 grams a day and weight loss, waist circumference, and body fat loss. A 2022 meta-analysis concluded that ginger supplementation lowered blood sugar and hemoglobin A1c in people with type 2 diabetes. However, the dose used in these studies was 1,200 to 3,000 milligrams a day. Blueprint uses a dose of 400 milligrams a day, which appears to be underdosed. For NAC plus curcumin plus ginger, I'm going to give a rating of 3.5 out of 5. Yes, these ingredients have benefits for specifically inflammation, but some of them appear to be slightly underdosed. And again, the question is how much inflammation you need to reduce if you're already eating a healthy diet and you're already healthy. The last supplement on the block is red yeast rice plus odor-free garlic. It has 500 milligrams of red yeast rice extract and 100 milligrams of odorless garlic. Red yeast rice is a commonly used supplement for high cholesterol. It's over-the-counter and generally recognized as safe. A 2022 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that red yeast rice extract at a dose of 200 to 4,800 milligrams a day improved lipids, especially triglycerides. Now, the effect sizes for cholesterol and ApoB probably aren't as large as you would see from lipid-lowering drugs. So you shouldn't replace your medication with these kind of supplements because they're not as effective. Next is garlic. And I think now we have proof that Brian isn't a vampire because he's taking garlic. In randomized controlled trials, doses of 300 milligrams up to 6 grams of aged garlic or garlic powder twice a day for 4 to 12 weeks has been shown to reduce total cholesterol, triglycerides, and LDLC. A 2019 double-blind placebo-controlled study on patients at high risk of cardiovascular disease showed that 2400 milligrams of aged garlic extract per day increased microcirculation and triggered wound healing in the blood vessels, which protected against atherosclerosis progression. Now, I don't know how to convert the odorless garlic extract into actual garlic powder or some real garlic, but at least based on the studies, any amount of garlic appears to work, at least in terms of lowering your cholesterol. Overall, for this red yeast rice and garlic supplement, I'm going to give a rating of 4.2 out of 5. It's hard to mess it up because you have only two ingredients, and these uh, ingredients do have appear to have benefits, especially for triglycerides and cholesterol. Let's quickly talk about the berry powders and cacao. I don't think we should cover these because they're just food powders. And yes, you should try to get most of your fruit and vegetables and berries in whole food form. But the freeze-dried powders are also quite useful. And there's plenty of evidence that berries are good for you. All right, we've gone through all the supplements and all the ingredients. Yes, a lot of these ingredients do meet the clinically relevant dose, whatever that means. But a lot of the other supplements or the ingredients don't meet that. Here's the conclusion about my ratings for these supplements. The longevity mix, 4 out of 5. Essential soft gels, 4.9 out of 5. Essential capsules, 2.5 out of 5. NAC curcumin ginger, 3.5 out of 5. And red yeast rice and garlic, 4.2 out of 5. In total, it's 3.8 out of 5, which isn't that bad. I'm not making this video to trash these supplements. I think, actually, the Blueprint stack is more evidence-based than most other companies out there, and they're more transparent with their ingredients. So, yeah, I'm happy that uh, they are 
being uh, so transparent and I did just believe that people deserve to know, okay, what is the actual evidence and is there any evidence at all? If you want to know what supplements I'm taking, then check out my free supplement list. Link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe to future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.